Good morning. Hi, everybody. Um, is anybody else like slightly hungover? Or is it just me? I'm sorry. Okay. Um, good morning, I think. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, my name is Bo Christensen. I'm director of platform engineering at Victor Ops. Uh, I've been in Colorado for eight years now. Um, I'm originally from Berlin, Massachusetts, which is a little tiny cow town. Um, I worked for Ping Identity for like a decade. Uh, I work for Red Canary here downtown, and I'm at Victor Ops now, so I've had a fun tour through um, some of the uh, awesome companies around uh, Denver locally here. Um, I do swear a lot, I'm sorry. Uh, it, that'll happen throughout the, the presentation. Uh, I hope it's okay, I apologize uh, up front. It just kind of slips out sometimes. Um, I just want to say too, I've, I've been in Denver for uh, almost a decade. I've gotten the chance to work with a ton of you in this community, um, work with you and for you, uh, and I'm just really proud of everybody here uh, for creating such an awesome uh, community around tech. So give, her, give yourselves a hand for just being awesome. Yay. Uh, this, uh, this talk is gonna be about uh, building highly reliable systems. Uh, it's going to be medium, high level, uh, not super low level, no command lines. Um, but it's kind of about this pursuit of perfection that we're all after. Um, if anyone has ever studied or read anything about Buddhism, there's two uh, kind of tracks that you can take. One of them is Theravana, and the other one is Mahayana, right? So Theravana uh, believes that anyone can achieve enlightenment at any point in time throughout the day. You can do something beautiful and you are enlightened. Uh, Mahayana is, uh, they sort of believe that perfection is unattainable, but we shouldn't stop pursuing it, right? So that's more uh, kind of like the Japanese mindset and why they're so incredibly good at uh, all kinds of crafts and all kinds of disciplines. Um, and we as technology professionals working in the cloud are after this, this one, right? We're not after 0.99 or 3.9s or 4.9s or whatever. We're in pursuit of this one, this perfection. Um, and lots of things are acting on us, right? We have, you know, uh, developers, we have things going on in the cloud, we have uh, business scale and of course like terrible actors on the internet. And we build complex, highly reliable systems to, to attain this, what we call, you know, the 1.0, the unattain unattainable. <clears throat> um, this is, I've been trying to build distributed systems for a long time now. Uh, this is one of the first ones uh, I attempted to build. It was awful. Um, those are uh, uh, just some terrible nodes that we had uh, deployed between two uh, data centers in Boston and Denver. Um, the links that we had between them fell down constantly. The databases would corrupt themselves. Uh, it was an awful attempt, and I, I, I hope I've gotten better at this. Um, internally at VictorOps, uh, my CTO, uh, this is our favorite saying in engineering. Um, reliability is our most important feature. If we're down, uh, you guys don't get the alerts that you need. Um, so this is what we work towards internally and why we have attempted to uh, tackle the multi-master distributed system. So uh, this will be a series of tips that should be practical and every, everybody should be easily able to consume. The first one is make sure you want to do this because it's, it's awful. Uh, it's a really, really hard problem. Um, in a lot of companies, especially if you have enterprise customers, are starting to equate uh, multi-master failover distributed systems with uh, reliability and insurance. It means that uh, it, it describes to them that you are uh, mature enough to be able to build a system like this. And having multiple systems in multiple geographies is uh, more reliable than not. Uh, this is generally not true. Uh, the complexities involved in doing this create a system uh, that can, be, can easily fall apart at any one point in time. This is, has anybody seen this diagram? Have you been to reInvent? Yes, yes, yes. This is like the Netflix super cool animation of them 
Is anybody from Netflix here? <laughs> All right, good. Uh, so, <laughs> so this is the super cool animation that they show of how like incredibly easy and awesome it is to fail over between their data centers, right? And the bits just flow, and we're like, oh, we you know detect 11% error rate, and and it's all awesome, right? They have enough people where they can pay an animator to do this, right? <laughs> like I, I, I don't <laughs> like. I, <laughs> Uh, generally, uh, we are not at Netflix's scale. Um, do, actually, just really quick. Uh, does anybody here have more than 20,000 nodes in production? Raise your hand. One, two, how about more than 1,000? Yeah. So we're like small to medium scale as a community for the most part. So tackling this kind of stuff uh, is, is really kind of not in our wheelhouse. But large companies see things like this and expect it from the rest of us here, right? Um, so tackling these things, like, we're definitely not, we don't have Death Star <laughs> infrastructures. I mean, I, I, I kind of wish I did, and maybe not, I don't know. Uh, they, they have enough people uh, in those organizations to be able to, like, have these incredible diagrams, these incredible animations. Um, for the most part, our, our systems sort of still look like this, right? This is like a shitty Visio from back in the day where, you know, the, the CDDB is the integration layer for everything, right? Uh, none of us really have uh, all of the cool support and the thousands of people that do this stuff, uh, like all the big guys. Uh, my documentation, you know, like if you take a crappy garage uh, diagram, I'm building a garage right now, so these are interesting to me. Well, this one isn't even on the ground. It's like sticking up. You can't pull a car or anything into it. It's got this like weird, like what the fuck is that? It's like that's the wiring on the top of it, right? Like, this is what our documentation looks like, right? So legit reasons to continue along this path. Um, you have highly valuable transactions. Um, mostly enterprise focused. Um, you have a lot of maturity inside your engineering organization. Uh, you're dealing with safety, life critical stuff, core internet services, or you're running like an ambulance system or of some kind. Uh, probably shouldn't do it uh, if you're running like posting cartoons on the internet or dating apps or you know like fucking Reddit still is in one data center. Apparently they don't care. So uh, uh, practical tip number two, the first place you wanna start uh, is to identify seams in your application. What do I mean by a seam? It's where you can kind of start to slice off little uh, parts of the system uh, um, without changing them to a large degree. We went through this exercise. Uh, it took us a long time to kind of like decompose the app into uh, what we think uh, are the pieces uh, to, to slice off, right? And we were looking for basically three attributes. So are they stateless? Is it at the edge? Uh, and it, does it have singular data tenancy? So it's not using a shared database at all. So this is a very high level diagram of our uh, actor uh, system here at uh, VictorOps. Um, and you can see there's a bunch of them at the edge. There's little guys that have their own uh, um, data stores, uh, there's some that are completely stateless, and we identified three of these that looked like they were good candidates to start to peel off. This guy, uh, it, we call it the alert endpoint. So this one is at the edge, it's stateless, um, and it is a really good candidate for slicing off of our infrastructure and putting it out into the clouds. Um, and the purpose of this is to create what we're calling kind of a shield in front of the entire infrastructure. Um, these shields will kind of deploy out into multiple regions around the world uh, as a way to allow us to move the larger, more complex parts of the infrastructure around underneath it without losing any of this highly valuable traffic that we have. So this guy again, our little alert endpoint is the one we chose. 
Uh, and this was actually a really fun exercise for it as well. If you pick one of these little, tiny, stateless uh, systems, you can kind of start to build a whole lot of durability and reliability into it. So we decomposed them, we put them on Kubernetes, uh, we gave them like a little cache, we gave them a queuing system too, so if he had any issues connecting home, he could store everything there. Uh, and the technologies we use in this particular case uh, were cloud agnostic, so it's a really small uh, cloud agnostic set that we can put wherever we can find a Kubernetes API around the world. Uh, and then in this case, we kind of set these up in Google and Amazon and started to drive some uh, just kind of test traffic through them. Uh, still connected to our own core infrastructure, but completely different DNS entries, uh, different endpoint for us to uh, attach to that we can run a ton of automation against uh, while not affecting our production alert traffic at all. Uh, over time, uh, we start to then canary some of the traffic through. Um, from the, uh, the DNS load balancer into these new little alert endpoints, the shield itself. And eventually I get to that 90% mark, um, keep doing science, keep studying the infrastructure, et cetera, um, to get to this kind of, you know, happy land of everything is awesome. Do you see the improvement in my diagrams, by the way? <laughs> Cloudcraft.io, it'll make it look like a genius, I swear. So, Practical tip number four, don't forget to do science. Uh, when you get to a state where you have a uh, master, slave, failover, setup, stay in that mode for a long time. Study the system. Don't go full multi-master, multi-master replication right away. You want to make sure that you have a chance your teams, your production teams, have a chance to study this system uh, in its uh, active passive state, which is less fragile generally than multi-master. This is kind of a, a high level view of what we might look like in this uh, um, master slave setup or rep read replica setup here. We'll stay in this state for um, months to just make sure that everything's good to go before switching uh, so things to look for, uh, the SRE book, has everybody read that, I'm sure, at this point in time from Google? The Four Golden Signals, Latency, uh, Traffic Errors and Saturation, excellent ones to study while you're in this mode. Uh, and thanks to Yoda in the last Star Wars movie, we have a great quote. Um, Injecting chaos into the system at this point in time is perfect. Um, so using a bunch of the chaos tools that are out there now, there's a uh, some, uh, the Gremlin guys are doing some amazing stuff too. Um, it's kind of uh, their uh, Kubernetes native or uh, container native, um, and they can set up all kinds of schedules and whatnot. Chaos Monkey, I'm sure people have played with before. Um, but remember, unreliable infrastructure is, uh, is your friend in this case. I think like, I'm gonna go off on a rant real quick, but, um, us as operations folks for a very long time have been trying to build very, very durable systems for software to run on top of. Um, and I think that's been to the detriment of reliability um, for the last 20 years or so. Uh, unreliable infrastructure is starting to force uh, software engineering to build more durable and reliable systems on top of them. Um, so I would, I would stress that unreliable, chaotic infrastructure in this case is, is the friend of the application. So uh, I'm gonna, again, in the context of us, so uh, small to medium-sized companies, uh, I would highly suggest that you pick a cloud and stick with it. Um, the cloud agnostic distributed hybrid cloud for small to medium sized companies will stick you in the mud for years. You'll never get out of it. Um, and it, it's gonna be much more efficient for the business uh, to just pick a cloud, use their, uh, their expertise and all their services to really bootstrap and enable your uh, multi-master deployments. <laughs> uh, so this is like a, a 
disgusting systems hall of fame system diagrams that I found on the internet. So this is, if you don't go that route, if you don't try and keep it simple, you end up with these hilarious diagrams that I'm sure people have seen before. Uh, highly complex, lots of craziness going on. Like this one looks like an accountant that was working in Excel, like fucking finally uh, decided to build a network diagram. It's just awful. Uh, this one, like, I don't even know, like, they just, this is like one Hadoop thing right there, you know? I don't know. <laughs> this one's Buddha, like, what the fuck is that? It looks like a monster. I, this was one of mine, actually. It's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> These guys, uh, I, I, nano, they have nano systems in, like, a word cloud at the bottom. I don't know. I'm sorry. Done. There's so many more. Just Google like distributed systems architectures and do the image search on Google. It's amazing. Um, but really, uh, it, it's kind of a lot of these architectures are coming out of, uh, and I love the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, um, but this diagram, this, it's kind of a menu of cool things that you can install, right? And we're all like, oh my god, Linkerd is so cool. I just want to stick it on top of my Kubernetes cluster and use it along with, you know, like what some of the other ones like Packet and they're all great, but each one of those is an SME. Each one of those is an expert that needs to run that for you in production for years. Or if you have one person that knows them all, it's a huge liability for your business. So I would uh, just caution, maybe pick like four <laughs> Don't build the whole architecture on top of this menu set. It's super cool and it's awesome, but it's generally meant for companies uh, with 20,000 or more production nodes and have an army of engineers to run it. So, you know, for, for the rest of us, um, really good tools for multi-master deployments, uh, Aurora, Aurora, Google Spanner, Route 53. We chose Amazon. Um, for the, uh, the differences between Aurora and Spanner. Um, Spanner is awesome. They do uh, incredible networking magic to get Spanner to work across the globe. But you have to rewrite your application to use it and it's really hard to get the data out afterwards. Uh, Aurora Multimaster was fully MySQL compliant, which is what we ran on. Um, so for us, that was kind of like the, the shot um, that, that tipped us over to the Amazon side. Um, but a bunch of these tools uh, are, are invaluable when you're building systems like this. Um, yeah. Man, I'm going fast, I'm sorry. Uh, the food's not gonna be ready, you guys are gonna be starving in here. <laughs> um, so again, uh, screaming, streaming, queuing, uh, database systems are, uh, that the clouds provide are gonna kinda tip you in one direction or the other, depending on uh, what your software is written in and what kind of technologies you already use. Um, and they will all help you tackle uh, the monster here. And so uh, practical tip number six, uh, tackle the state monster. Um, controlling application state is probably the most important thing when trying to build a system like this. Um, keeping your stateful set as small as possible, easily shipped back and forth across the country. Don't use large data sets. Don't try to have this massive four terabyte, you know, Postgres database that you're trying to replicate between US East 1 and US West 2 all day long. Make sure that your applications have a tiny little state engine and that is what you use to replicate. This kind of stuff won't work. If you have huge databases that you're trying to ship, it's gonna be fragile, it's gonna fall apart at scale, it's just gonna get bigger, and it's gonna eat you alive. If you can keep them small, this is a much better chance of success over time. Um, and as an engineering organization, uh, development and operations, just be mindful of stateful applications wherever they exist or prop up. Um, you want to kind of attack them with a, a bat. Uh, make sure they're as small as possible or, or don't need to exist at all. There's a lot of technologies, again, that uh, can kind of help you here. Um, 
Galera has come a long way. It was super scary in the beginning. I had lost a lot of sleep using the technology. Um, Dynamo, Aurora, awesome. Spanner, big table, of course. New one called Cockroach DB. It's sort of an unfortunate name, but until you think about it, you're like, oh yeah, that cockroaches don't die, right? Um, just started to experiment with it. It's super cool. So, to finish up super early, sorry guys. Make sure you really, really need to. Identify seams in your application wherever you can. Uh, create a shield to help you move. Um, don't forget to science. For the rest of us, just pick a cloud and stick with it. Uh, and tightly control your state monster wherever he may exist. And eventually you'll get to this really cool diagram uh, that's super simple. Everything works. We're replicating back and forth. We have a shield. We do cool DNS failovers and we could, you know, make the neat Netflix animation work. So if you guys are interested in stuff like this, of course, we're hiring like everybody else. Come work with us. And that's all I got. <laughs>